Hey everyone, um, my name is Michael Stevenson and I'm going to be working with you uh, guys for some tutorials next week um, for Dr. Kate Highfield who's a good friend of mine um, and she's asked me to work with you particularly on um, uh, a technology that I like to use quite a lot. It's called um, Google Drive and we're going to actually have a little look at how Google Drive can be used as a really good um, learning tool uh, particularly in the in the new K-10 to maths uh, curriculum. So um, just to start things off, as I said, this is um, me, and uh, if you're looking for me, you'll find me um, at this email address, that's michael.stevenson at mq.edu.au, and if you're looking for me in person, um, I do actually work in the School of Education. I'm a doctoral student this year, but I'm teaching uh, English methodologies, um, so you'll find me in C3A 813 on level 8 there, um, and uh, listen, I hope to see you all uh, in person very soon, which I will do next week and um, hope to see you around the uni. Um, so if you've got any questions at all about this lecture, feel free to email me. And um, we're going to make a start basically by uh, having a few things open. So this is, although it's a little mini lecture, I'd love you to be able to follow on with me. And I've done it as a screen recording. So hopefully um, you can, uh, as you're watching this video, you can actually have a try of uh, some of the things that we're going to have a look at. And um, basically there are three things you're going to need to have open. Uh, and those things are, first of all, Google Drive. Okay, so you may or may not be new to Google Drive, and I'm going to um, take you through um, some of the basics. So um, we'll, we'll look at um, what it is, how it works, how you can get started using it. Um, of course, if you do know how to use Google Drive, you might like to skip through the, um, the video a little bit. Um, because you might find it, you already know what we're covering there. Um, but certainly the next part of the video after that will look at the K-10 uh, maths um, curriculum in the context of, of what we know about Google Drive and what it can do to support um, uh, our students in that curriculum. Um, the second thing that you're going to want to have open though is basically the um, we're going to look at the program builder. So you, I'm not sure whether you guys have actually done this. I'll, I, I meant to check this with Kate, um, but if you are new to the program builder, it is actually um, a, an incredible tool um, for both primary and secondary teachers, um, and it's really, really useful for um, putting programs together and um, exporting them as Word documents um, and uh, making sure that you embed the um, Australian curriculum uh, requirements in your New South Wales program. Um, we're, we're not going to actually make any programs today, but we are actually going to have a look at the sample programs for maths. And we're going to look at one in particular, uh, which is around data. And um, it's a great uh, a unit that I, I want to have a look at. It's actually a year seven unit. So it's a little bit um, uh, maybe ahead of what you guys are looking at, but it's a really nice unit to, um, to consider, I guess, where a lot of our kids in primary um, are going and where they need to sort of be when they start start um, secondary. So that's the second thing. And then the third thing um, we're going to need to have is the K-10 maths syllabus. Okay, so with the K-10 math syllabus, um, you'll find all of these things, by the way, I'm going to show you how to find, but they are really, really easy. You just Google, in this case of the, the maths um, syllabus, you just Google it, um, and you probably already have your copy, if not. Um, what I generally like to do is to, to download it. So where it says view or download, I usually click this little link here to download. Um, the reason that I do this is it gets you a PDF copy of the syllabus, which I find really handy because it's, um, uh, you you know, you then got sort of page references and things. Um, of course, if you prefer just to, to view it, you can view it in the in the web browser. Um, it's very easy to, to sort of click on the area that you're looking at. Um, in our case, we'll be looking more at um, uh, statistics and probability, and we're looking at data especially. Uh, so you can actually follow on with the web version, but I, I usually like to have the PDF version. I should have mentioned with the program builder, to get into this, uh, you do actually need to have a Scootle account. Okay, so you'll see when you go to sign in, 
um, it gives you two options. Uh, the first one is sign in with a DEC account, and um, unfortunately none of us have that unless you're working for DEC, um, which I, I would I would doubt in, in, in our cases. Uh, but the other option you can sign in with is a Scoodle account. So if everyone can get a Scoodle account as long as you have an EDU ADU, uh, excuse me, EDU AU address. So um, that's easy enough for us with our Macquarie account. So to get into Scoodle, because it, it'll actually prompt you when you click sign in with Scoodle, um, I, I have my Scoodle account and it, it'll come straight up. Okay, and you can see there, um, that's my Scoodle account, which happens to be my Macquarie address. Um, but I had to register this. Okay, so um, in my case, I'll be able to sign in that way. If you haven't yet registered for Scoodle, the way you do it, uh, it's this tiny little link down the bottom of the page, okay, which says a accessing Scoodle. And if you give that a click, uh, you'll see it says basically um, uh, register here using your education email address. Okay, so um, it's really good as, as you're watching this um, uh, video, you might actually like to hit the pause button now and just register for your Scoodle account if you've not done so already. Um, just while we're here, Scoodle is a fantastic uh, digital repository of um, amazing resources for um, every curriculum area, uh, for virtually every single year level, right up to year 10, and it does also include some year 11, year 12 stuff, but um, particularly for primary, there is just tons of good stuff there so it really does pay to have um, a free account and um, the beautiful thing about what you'll find on Scoodle is that uh, everything is aligned to the um, the Australian curriculum so so you, you you can really find some great resources that are ready to use in your classroom and I'm going to demonstrate some of those uh, later in the lecture um, so yeah, we basically need to have our um, program builder uh, sign in done. So I'm just going to go back here and I'm going to click uh, log in. Remember that I, I opted to log into the um, program builder um, using my Scoodle account. So here I am signed in now. Um, the maths syllabus, we're going to make sure we've downloaded that and I've done exactly that. So I've got it on my um, desktop just over here. And um, the other thing that we're going to need to do guys is to be signed in to Google Drive. Okay, so Google Drive, um, I am going to explain what it is and how it works, but um, you'll, you'll want to sign into this. Okay, now um, you can do that one of two ways. Okay, if you want to use a standard Google account, um, otherwise sometimes known as a Gmail account, um, you certainly can sign in with that way. If you already have a Gmail account, then you, you've actually already got a Google Drive account. Um, so in this case, I actually am signed in with my Gmail account. So if I click my little account uh, up here in the, the, the right hand corner, you'll see that I am actually signed in um, as, as my Gmail account. That's, that's your first option. Okay. The other option that you, you have um, is, is very straightforward. It actually doesn't need you to sign up. So in the case of a Gmail account, I would actually need to sign up for one of those if I didn't have it. However, you can also sign in to your um, to Google Drive using your Macquarie account. So if you've not actually um, done that, um, Macquarie, uh, you may or may not know this, but Macquarie actually have um, an agreement with Google uh, for your email address, uh, which um, is, is actually a, basically a, what they call a Google Apps um, setup. And um, what that means is that Google provides um, your email account as, as, a, as a provider to Macquarie University. Um, they also provide you with the other apps that are associated with your email account. So one of those is Google Drive. So you've actually already got a Google Drive account um, with your Macquarie address. Okay, And it's really easy to, to do. Um, all I need to do is basically type in, I'll do this again just so you can see. Uh, I just need to type into my browser um, drive.google.com okay and I'm going to hit enter and you'll see it takes me to this login and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sign in and the email that I use is going to be my Macquarie student address so in my case it's michael.stevenson at students.mq.edu.au uh, that's um, I am a doctoral student so I do have a student account and that does give me access to Google Drive right and um, it's the password that I'm going to use is basically my one ID password so it's the exact same password that you use for most of other your other um, Macquarie 
things. And uh, you don't need to sign up for this, as I said. It, it, it already is um, uh, part of your um, uh, your email address, so you're, you're good to go. All you need to do is hit the sign in button and you will be taken straight to um, to Google Drive. So you can see basically before, I, I actually signed in twice here. I'll just switch to the, to the window behind. This is my um, Gmail account. Okay, and you can see that it's got the Google logo right at the top hand corner. This is my Macquarie account. It's exactly the same um, uh, setup with all the, the docs there. Um, the, the one difference is that it has Macquarie Uni and rather than using a Gmail account, I'm using my um, Macquarie email address to, um, to do that. So either option, guys, is perfectly fine. Um, I know some people as students like to have a Gmail account because they're a little worried that their Macquarie account might be cancelled, you know, a couple of years after they leave. Um, I, I, you know, that might be you or you might just be happy to use your Macquarie account. So once you're um, ready to go, I'm just going to close this because I'm, I'm going to use my Gmail account to demonstrate. So those three things again is our Google account um, signed into Google Drive, our um, uh, program builder uh, signed in with our Scoodle account and our K-10 maths syllabus which we've downloaded. Okay, And, and if you've got all those three things um, ready to go, we're, we're good to, um, to work on with this lecture. So thanks for following along. Um, so guys, the first thing I wanted to do is, as I said before, demonstrate um, a little bit about um, Google uh, Drive um, and uh, if you're new to, to Google Drive, you might like to follow me at this point. Um, if, as I said, if you have used it before, uh, you might like to fast forward about five minutes and um, pick up where we where we look at the K to 10 maths uh, syllabus. Um, if you are new to Google Drive, as I said, um, Google Drive is uh, a relatively new product. Okay, it's it's rather similar to Dropbox in that what it does is it provides you with cloud storage. Um, so it's a bit like having a big online USB stick where you put all your documents and spreadsheets and, and all the rest of it, or your PDFs, um, and it does give you some some pretty good storage. In fact, um, it's it's actually more storage than you get with Dropbox as a free thing. It's, it gives you 15 gigabytes of um, storage uh, to fill up, basically. Um, that's one part of Google Drive. Okay. Now the other part that I'm actually going to look at today is um, uh, what has previously been called Google Docs, and people will still use Google Docs or still um, mention the term Google Docs as a way of, I guess, uh, talking more about the application side of um, of Google Drive. Okay. So Google Drive obviously does all the storage, but it also gives you access to all these neat little applications that are part of your Google Drive account. Um, and you can see um, I've actually got a lot of these um, just sitting in my drive. Um, you can see that there are um, a different different uh, little um, icons that um, that show me what I'm, I'm dealing with. And I can see I've got a document here. This is actually my planning document that I was um, putting together for Kate's workshops. And I, I'm, I'm going to um, bring this with me and I'll share this with you on the day. Um, I've also got my little journal that I use for um, my TEP 423 class, and I'll show you that in a sec. I've got um, spreadsheets. So in this case, this is a class a collaborative spreadsheet with my um, TEP classes. Um, and I've also got things like drawings. So you can actually do little diagrams. I'll, I'll, I'll briefly demonstrate those. Um, but Google Google uh, Docs, as it, as it has been known, um, actually includes a lot of different uh, document types. And I can demonstrate this really easily by clicking on the Create button. So as I click on create, you'll see here you get a bunch of different uh, options, right? You get the documents, you can see there's presentations, spreadsheets, there's forms, there's drawings. And um, I, I suppose if you're looking at this for the first time, you might um, notice that it, it's a little bit similar to um, a, a, an off, a, so, a software um, package like Microsoft Office, right? So when you think of Microsoft Office, you think of uh, uh, Word, uh, Excel, um, PowerPoint, um, and, and so on. Um, and Google uh, Google Drive or Google Docs is is rather similar to that in terms of the um, 
the, the different uh, document types that you can see here. So document, as the name said, it really is just a, um, a, a word process document, whereas your presentations is something that's a bit closer to PowerPoint. Spreadsheet, obviously, is closer to Excel. Uh, and then the forms and the drawings, um, which we'll, we'll look at um, in the more in the workshops. Um, we uh, today, actually, just, just incidentally, are going to have a, a little bit of a look at the spreadsheet um, application and we're also going to um, in the workshop be looking at forms so um, I, I am sort of focused on these two uh, particularly in the context of the maths um, curriculum work that we'll be doing but um, you know it is good to remember that there are other uh, document types that you can look at um, and I, I'll just I will just actually briefly demonstrate um, uh, one of these so I'm actually going to start a document here um, just to show you a blank document um, which which, um, as, as I said before, it's a word process document. And you'll see what I'm looking at here is rather similar to a typical word processor. So re rather similar to Microsoft Word or, or Pages on the Mac or um, Open Office. Um, it's very straightforward. And you can see you've got basically all the formatting options up here. You know, your bold, italics, underline. You've got your um, centering and alignment, uh, your bullet points um, and what have you. Um, and the, the, the neat thing about all of this is it's a word processor processor which is actually uh, within a browser so that what I'm looking at here is a web browser and I'm using the word processor within that browser um, the term for this that people often talk about is cloud computing um, which has been around for a few years and um, one of the ideas with cloud computing is that um, your applications don't have to be stored on your computer. So in the case of this document that I just start typing in, um, this data that I'm, I'm now entering, which is not much data as you can see, uh, is, is stored in my Google Drive account which is um, online. Right, it's not on my. Um, it's not a, 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 like a document that's sitting on my desktop. Um, so that's the the different concept. Um, so that's really the first thing about um, uh, when we look at the Google uh, Google Docs in this case, and. Um, the other thing that is really quite significant about this is you'll see it's really easy to, to do things, um, you, you know, file, uh, you can do all sorts of things like downloading the document and have it as a PDF or um, you can uh, rename it if you want to. So you can see it's called Untitled Document at the moment, but I could just uh, click the Rename button and give it a, a, a new name. Um, which I'll, I'll do. Uh, and, and there you go. It's pretty much like just using a standard document. Um, however, the, the really, really extraordinary thing about um, using uh, Google Drive or Google Docs is um, this, this feature up here in the top uh, right-hand corner, okay, um, which um, really, in, in a way, uh, separates um, Google Drive from so many other um, Office suites uh, because of what it's capable of doing um, when you share a document. So you can see if I, uh, as I mouse over this, you can see here that it says um, private only to me. So this is, this is a bit similar to um, a typical, you know, word processor situation where you're working on a Word document and, uh, of course, it's sitting on your desktop, for example, and, um, of course, it's, you know, it's private, right? Only only you can see that and, and work on that at that particular point. And, of course, you can you can email it off to people and, and do whatever you like. You can print it out. But uh, until you do those things, of course, it's a, it's a private document. With, um, with Google Drive uh, documents, what you can do is, is share them... Um, online with people and uh, what what that then opens up is that uh, the idea that people can actually access that document they can type into it and as they as they uh, work with that document the changes are made instantly right so um, if, if someone else were to be accessing this document right now and starting to type into that, I could s literally see what they were typing instantly. So um, uh, I guess the, the, the term for this is it's, a, it's um, collaborative writing, I guess, in the case of a, a word processing document. Um, but it's, it's a form of online collaboration and it's a form of collaboration that happens in real time. That The term real time uh, really refers to the, the instant nature of it. Um, so that if anybody else was to uh, make a change to this, I would see that 
instantaneously. Um, so I'm going to show you how, how that, that works, right? Um, basically, if I hit the, uh, the share option, what I can do is I can, I can do the, this um, a couple of ways. The first thing that I can do is I can invite people. Okay, so what I, what I could do here is um, I could just invite uh, Kate, for example, and I could, uh, uh, I could type in um, her, her email address, which is I'm going to use her Gmail account because I know she likes to use that for uh, Google Drive. And um, there's Kate Highfield. So what I've done, I've, I've put her in and I could hit a little message here and say, Hi, Kate, uh, this is just a demo document that... I'm oops that I'm sharing with you uh, for the um, uh, the lecture, and I think she called it a lecturette, so I'll just type that in. Um, okay, and so what I, what happens then if I hit the send button? Uh, that goes through to her. Um, you can see now she's actually on the list of people that have access to this document. So um, she now, if she signs into Google Drive, she then sees the document uh, and she can make changes to that, that document and they'll appear instantly. It's, it, there's no um, two versions of this document. There's actually only one version and we're, we're both actually accessing the one version. So uh, that's an interesting thing to, to mention because if I were to email this document to Kate, um, we'd essentially have two versions of the document. We'd have the version that's still sitting with me on my desktop and then we'd have the version that arrives in Kate's inbox. Um, Google Drive doesn't work that way, right? It's This is just one document um, to which Kate and I have access. So if she makes changes, it's making changes to the document that I have as well. Um, so that gets uh, past a lot of um, what people call versioning uh, concurrency issues, where particularly when you're working with large teams, right? If we had a team of, let's say, four or five people, and we're emailing it out to um, those four or five people, um, we're getting four or five different versions. And you can imagine how difficult that is to coordinate if we were all making changes to these four or five different versions. How do we then bring that back to one document, it's, it can be quite a challenge. Obviously, um, Google Drive gets around those kinds of challenges. Um, and it also opens up some really interesting uh, territory for us to explore with our kids um, on, uh, on collaboration and group work and, um, and uh, you know, projects and inquiry and all those sort of things that we love to explore in our curriculums. So, um, yeah, the, interesting um, to, to demonstrate. Now, this obviously is just a really this isn't really much of a document. So I'd love to show you um, an example of a document where we've got a little bit more of a, um, a sense of the collaboration that's happened. Um, as I mentioned, this, um, this document right here that I'm going to click on is um, my uh, what I call my collaborative journal. And this is a, a document that's shared between me and the other tutor on my course. So we both, um, we both do collaborative lesson planning in our, um, in our uh, um, unit. And um, we both sort of share our ideas and put them into this document. And then in turn, what we do is then share that with our students. Um, and uh, I want to sort of show you I'll just um, close this table of contents when it comes up. I want to show you um, basically how it works. As you, you see, this is um, pretty much a, a, a week by week lesson plan uh, where we, we go through and um, we're, uh, you know, detailing what we're doing with the students and we're putting down, you know, details about our readings and the strategies that we're using. And um, what we often encourage the students to do is to, to share, um, I guess, their own thoughts on, on what, it, what we're doing in, in, in class and to provide some feedback. Um, so you can see here, if you look on the right-hand side of the document, um, that the students have actually um, have all got access to this, and um, we've we've been doing a bit of a a, a comments uh, um, process here. I call it right on the reading, um, where the students can actually highlight um, you know a, a section of the document if they've got a comment to make about that particular section, and then um, we can have a nice little threaded discussion on that. So a little bit different, isn't it, to having a, a discussion forum in iLearn, where um, quite often you you know, you've got to find a reference point. In this case, the reference points are quite clear, 
Okay, so you can see that um, it's easy to, to see what the students are talking about and we've got some great conversations about the lesson that are, are happening. Um, some people often call this this process of um, uh, you know sharing content with um, students and then having them um, feedback at you uh, a kind of a back channel right uh, because what's happening is you're presenting the content and teaching the the workshops the students are, are having um, uh, an opportunity to to sort of feed back on on what's what's going on here so it, it's great for us because it helps us planning um, and then we can we can see if there's anything that we needed to address a little bit more um, closely and then we can we can continue on from there and it also helps me with my tu my other tutor to um, to plan uh, strategically as teachers and to sort of plan collaboratively in the way that we um, we put the workshops together and so we're, we're really doing the same thing and we're being quite consistent in, in what we do um, and we're able to, 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 to clearly see that so great way to do your your planning um, and uh, really powerful stuff if you're using Google uh, Docs in this way um, I just wanted to segue briefly here to uh, a colleague of mine who's um, who's done a rather similar thing in maths um, and he's actually, I'm going to show you a screenshot, he gave me a screenshot of this. Um, this uh, screenshot that we're looking at is a Year 7 uh, unit of work, or, or sometimes we call it a program, um, where uh, in this case it's a, it's a term long unit, um, and it's on um, where, that you can see there's uh, all sorts of interesting things on palindromes and um, uh, puzzles and multiplication uh, and um, you can see that uh, there's um, embedded content from the um, from the national curriculum and the, from the K to 10 maths curriculum um, there's some great uh, uh, links to resources and a lot of these resources are actually shared on Google Drive um, for the, the between these teachers that are working on this and then the other thing that you can see that he, and this is what he wanted to show me was that um, Google Drive actually gives you access to this feature called revision history where you can um, go back and, and track what's happened with that document and in this case we're actually looking at the revision history of a team of about uh, five teachers that were working on this year seven year group and they all put the uh, the unit of work together collaboratively and so you can see that at varying uh, times they've all had input into to what's gone into that and you can see that um, it, it's gone uh, over the course of really actually a couple of weeks um, uh, from early February right through to late February um, and they've all uh, had some input into that and they've all used Google um, uh, Google Drive in order to coordinate that um, that process so again that same issue of having four or five versions of the one document um, has been they've been able to avoid that and have um, have just the one document that they can put together and and uh, the the, um, the the guy that actually sort of headed this he was a head um, teacher in maths um, just said it, it's really opened up some uh, some much richer discussions on the planning process um, and help the teachers to be much more transparent in what they do to let them know that they don't have to do everything by themselves because I think sometimes when we, we're working in schools we feel like um, we're working in, you know, in isolation when we have our own classrooms and, uh, you know, quite often teachers don't talk to each other. Um, so this kind of technology is really powerful for opening up that, um, that, those discussions. Um, so guys, we're going to have a look now. Um, we're, I'll, I'll show you um, uh, one other um, feature, uh, Google, Google Spreadsheets. We're actually going to have a look at that. Um, spreadsheets is a really important area of the maths curriculum um, and uh, has become increasingly so in um, in, in the, really the last 10 years. It's um, uh, lots of research that's been done uh, that uh, has uh, demonstrated, for example, that spreadsheets, when they're done really well, um, can uh, really ensure some higher order uh, thinking. And um, the spreadsheet I'm just showing you here really is just to show you an example of a spreadsheet. But um, this is a, a class spreadsheet that I do with my um, my TEP classes, where the students can actually um, fill in information about themselves. Um, and I didn't have to put this together. I just created the spreadsheet, shared it with all of them, and um, uh, they've filled in the information. So you can see at the top with the columns, um, we've got questions like, what sort of an English teacher do I want to be? Or the most important thing that 
you know you've learned about teaching um, and then the students have actually put some comments in so you can see you know um, uh, this student says uh, that she wants to be spontaneous and structured lessons should feel um, uh, creative and unpredictable but with common expectations and I, I said that was an interesting juxtaposition um, and then you can see there's a whole discussion that goes on so sometimes we get some nice little threaded discussions and spreadsheets are really easy to use so um, in this case I'm not really uh, I guess you could say exploiting the um, calculating potential of spreadsheets which uh, every good maths teacher should know how to do but it is still a collaborative spreadsheet so it's um it's a way of demonstrating how a spreadsheet can be um, filled with data um, in, in in a collaborative setting um, once you share that spreadsheet with uh, with a class of students and um, I know a lot of students who like to do this same sort of thing with um, with Google spreadsheets a very good opening activity when you teach your class in that first week and you want to get to know uh, more about everyone you just uh, have them fill in the spreadsheet and then you can get kids to comment so you can see some of these comments that are coming up they're coming up because um, basically what you do is highlighting a cell and then we're going to uh, up here and we're going insert and we're going comment and you can see that puts a comment into the spreadsheet um, which is nifty right um, so guys we're going to now think about I guess spreadsheets in a in a K to 10 context and I wanted to spend a, about 5 minutes on um, the K to 10 syllabus to look at um, how can we um, explore some of the affordances of Google Drive with the the K to 10 uh, math syllabus. So um, again, I, I I know you've probably looked at this syllabus uh, with Kate, um, and I'm not sure at your level how extensive that's been. Whether you're just still getting used to it, or um, whether you you know know it back to front. Um, I, I won't sort of do a beginner's walkthrough as such. What I, w I would really love to do with um, with the maths uh, syllabus here is to um, to, to go through and, and briefly highlight the things that I think are, are quite significant here um, for, for what we're trying to look at, which is the, the affordances of a, a tool like Google Drive, and to see what, if anything, is in this uh, math syllabus which might gel um, really nicely with um, what we, we might be able to do with Google Drive. So um, I'm going to really uh, just focus on the first, uh, first few pages. And we'll go up to the outcomes and we can look at a very specific outcome on data. So um, I, I wanted to um, to just flag, you know, if you if you haven't sort of, I, I suppose, read through the first um, um, 13 or 14 pages of, of the K-10 document, it is a really good read uh, because you'll, um, you'll get a good um, um, overview of, of really uh, what, is new about this document because it is a very new document okay and this is um, very significant because it is the first time in New South Wales that we are embedding a, uh, a essentially a national curriculum in a state document so it's very significant because the stuff that you're doing in this um, syllabus is uh, very consistent with the, um, the the new Australian curriculum in maths and um, the, uh, the, the, the bit that I want to really highlight here is um, uh, where they mentioned down, um, down in the introduction, um, this this uh, document that they're referring to here is the Melbourne Declaration uh, on the Educational Goals of Young for Young Australians. Uh, came out in two thousand and eight, and it's really a, a, a landmark document in Australia. We we didn't really have anything quite like it before, um, because for the first time, what it did was um, create. Uh, uh, um, a, uh, it, it basically uh, called for a commitment from all states and territories um, to support the principles that were articulated in the document and um, there were particularly a lot of principles around the use of ICT that were, were considered very very important and it was agreed basically by all states and territories that this document um, was, was the most important document for framing the development of the Australian curriculum so obviously back in December 2008 there really wasn't an Australian curriculum but there was uh, there were certainly moves at that stage to develop one and um, the Australian curriculum has very much come from this document so I, I would really encourage you to read it the bit that I've highlighted is um, is the uh, goal number two 
right? And that's um, a really important goal. There were a bunch of goals that were articulated in this document. And goal number two is all young Australians become successful learners, confident and creative individuals, and active and informed citizens. Um, and uh, you can see there we've got, you know, success, we've got confidence, creativity, uh, and it's about being active and informed citizens. So we're really trying to think about um, the future of our young Australians. You can see there, they're very, it's a very future-oriented statement, and it's, it's very much a statement statement that's, um, uh, that's about, you know, the kind of society that we want for our future. Um, if, if you're interested in, in looking at that further, I, I would urge you to have a read of the document and it's really easy to find. I, I'll put it into our, um, uh, our workshop notes, but if you're wanting to, to have a look at it now, um, you just type in, it's actually really easy to find, you just type into Google Scholar. Uh, the Melbourne Declaration, and that's it's so um, well searched for that you'll see it's the first document that comes up, and uh, just jump into the PDF of it, and um, you'll see here it's um, there's the document. Um, uh, what did I want to show you? Users, I'll just try to find ICTs. Yeah, and uh, the bit that I here we go. I wanted to show you this little part of it. Um, this was a really significant part for me when I was reading this document. Um, ICT comes up again and again in this document, but one of the key areas that we um, are going to look at is the idea that literacy and numeracy um, now is inextricably connected to the use of ICT. Um, prior to the Melbourne Declaration, we, we very much, um, in New South Wales at least, saw uh, ICT is a, an important thing, but, but what we would uh, perhaps describe as an add-on, right? Something that you did um, when you could, uh, in addition to your standard teaching of a very standard um, curriculum. You can see here in this statement, um, we're now saying that uh, ICT is, is part of our essential skills. And um, if we look at it, have the essential skills in literacy and numeracy and um, being creative and productive users of technology, especially ICT, as a foundation for success in all learning areas. So the idea is that um, uh, technology and ICT is, is very closely connected with literacy and numeracy. Um, not only that, it's also a very important foundation for uh, success in all learning areas. So when you get asked about, you know, why do we do ICT, um, it's it's, a, it's about creating a foundation for success, right? It's about recognising that, um, that our kids are going to go into the 21st century uh, workplace where ICT is, is absolutely uh, essential and um, where they, they need to have those skills to really thrive in our future society. And that the skills are really closely um, interwoven with, with literacy and numeracy. But also, um, if, you, if you like to get blooms about this, I guess you could say um, it's about being creative and productive with technology. So it's not enough just to, to have the skills, you need to be able to create. Um, interesting, isn't it, that we're looking at Google Drive and we're looking at this possibility for a, a technology that lets us create things um, in, in amazing collaborative settings. Uh, and um, so I just feel it really meshes nicely with the, um, uh, the Makicha paper. Um, so really have a look at that if you're interested. But uh, I'll just come back to... I've, and you see I jump around a bit. I'll come back to the um, the K to ten. So it does. You'll see all the um, syllabuses. By the way, they all mention the Melbourne Declaration. Okay, um, the one that we've just been looking at, um, and and it's well worth reading. Um, the other thing that I, I want to highlight. This is this is an, a, a neat little term, uh, isn't it? Um, you see this. Uh, you see this come. This term comes up again and again and again in the um, K to ten syllabuses. So you'll see it. You'll see it everywhere. You'll see it in English, in math, science, history. And uh, they're really, really keen. The Board of Studies Teaching and Educational Standards is really um, incredibly keen for us to be um, uh, collaborative curriculum planning as we um, as we, uh, we, we plan, right? And it's, um, it's, a, it's a considered a strategy that's really important for working on a number of levels. In this case, you see it's mentioned in relation to students with special needs so that we need to plan collaboratively in order to determine the most appropriate curriculum options. Um, but you'll see it comes up everywhere. It's actually a very important strategy for, for developing good uh, curricula um, 
and um, you know really meaningful learning. Um, same sort of thing here. Okay, um, so all all uh, decisions, curriculum options um, are made through collaborative curriculum planning processes. Okay, um, and and you'll see that everywhere you know, throughout the document. Um, there we go. Just to, in case you didn't believe me, gifted and talented students, and same sort of thing. Collaborative planning. Okay, so uh, very very good. So just like that screenshot that I showed you uh, a few minutes back, um, where we could see this secondary uh, maths team doing some collaborative curriculum planning, and uh, you know that the, the head of maths was just so so keen on it. He said, "I can't go back and do this any other way now." Um, there is a strong support for this way of working in um, in our syllabus documents now. Other, a couple of areas that I want to flag for you, because I'm, I'm sure that you've looked at um, uh, the, the areas of the math syllabus um, and how they, they work in relation to the Australian curriculum. Um, I'm sure you've looked at the coding. Uh, if you haven't, um, you know, page nine is a really good good one because you see how the um, Australian curriculum codes are embedded in our New South Wales document. Um, the this is interesting. I love the rationales. I'm an English teacher, so I tend to read these sort of things um, carefully. A uh, couple of bits that I've highlighted here. Now, this one here: digital technologies facilitate the expansion of ideas, providing access to new tools for continuing mathematical exploration and invention. Aren't they just wonderful uh, words to to use in relation to mathematical exploration and mathematical anything? Exploration, invention, creativity. Maths as a creative subject is that a wonderful thing to think about and that, that te technology can play a big role. Um, same sort of thing here. Uh, refined mathematical understanding, fluency, communication, logical reasoning, analytical thought and problem solving skills. I mean I would love to have kids in English that demonstrated those skills and I'd, I'd love to know that they're getting that from maths and uh, bringing that into the English classroom. Uh, I, I should have mentioned that I'm a secondary English teacher, by the way, so you'll hear me mention English there. Um, but lovely uh, little rationale there, and you see that um, you know you can see, uh, for example, here's a bit of the Melbourne Declaration: preparation for life in the 21st century. Um, so, so we do have a, a bit of a mandate for doing this sort of stuff. Um, and then, um, yeah, you can see here. Uh, I'll just go over that because I didn't really want to mention anything there. But I would like to look briefly, guys, at the aim on uh, on page 13, or the aims. I think there's three of them there. Um, so we're looking here at um, confident and creative users and communicators of mathematics able to investigate, represent and interpret situations in their personal and work lives and as active citizens. And see where that's come from. Um, We've got uh, increasingly sophisticated understanding of mathematical concepts and fluency with mathematical processes, able to pose and solve problems. Um, and then aim number three, uh, recognise connections between mathematics and other disciplines. So we want kids to make um, those connections between the subject areas that we often think of, particularly in secondary, as, as being rather separate. Um, and they don't need to be, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, we've got some, some lovely aims there, and we can see that it's really so far I guess um, what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing some strong support for um, the kind of things that I'd love to do uh, with technology in the maths curriculum and um, definitely there's a there's a real um, rationale behind what we're doing here um, now you'll you'll see here uh, obviously these are our areas um, and you'll see certain words come up a lot in the maths curriculum inquiry for example exploring You've, we've we've seen these words before um, and you'll see um, inquire I'm, I'm mentioning these because we're actually going to have a look at how these work in a particular um, uh, document in a particular uh, unit of work but inquiry is a really powerful way to teach maths um, and I'm sure Kate's probably worked with you on inquiry uh, if she hasn't then I'm sure she will because she's a big big fan of inquiry um, forms of learning uh, and it's a nice way to give a very real world context to the maths curriculum so we're going to see that uh, um, in our workshops um, the the areas that Kate sp specifically asked me to look at though is this one here the statistics and probability because um, uh, particularly uh, when we're thinking about data um, 
we can see with Google uh, Drive um, incredible capacity to, um, to, to collect and represent and analyze and interpret uh, and evaluate data. Um, so data is where we're going to really focus our attention on in these workshops um, to think about what, what are some of the things we can do uh, with the technologies. And um, you'll see that's where I really want to go now. So with the outcomes, I'm going to actually, because um, I'm, I'm sure you've looked at a lot of these outcomes, but I'm going to skip to um, the outcomes on uh, data and I'll just go to, I think it's, oh, I've highlighted it, That's I knew I had done something here. So um, if, you, if you go and have a look at um, uh, here, page 26, guys, is um, is a really nice page to, to have a look at. Um, this is uh, the outcome in relation to statistics and probability. The outcome reads, uh, students collect, represent, analyze, interpret, and evaluate data, assign and use probabilities, and make sound judgments. So that's an outcome that uh, applies to um, right from stage one through to stage five. So because this is a K to 10 document, again, that's very significant. That means that you and I, uh, me being a secondary teacher and you guys being primary, uh, are, are working from the same document. Um, so again, all sorts of possibilities for collaboration there. Um, and we can have some rich discussions about you know primary versus secondary or, or, or development over the course of the um, K to 10 continuum. Um, but you'll see here, if we look at data um, you, and we pick it up in early stage one, um, it's, it's lovely to see what stage one kids are doing. And I, I, I'm always very surprised when I look at the primary uh, curriculum because I'm, I'm just amazed at what primary kids can do. Having worked uh, for, for nearly 12 years in secondary, I'm, I'm always really surprised when I see amazing primary kids just doing extraordinary things, and they absolutely can. Um, so never, never think otherwise. In stage one, we've got kids that are representing data. Um, so they're looking at um, data sets and finding ways of representing that and that's um, a really good starting point. Um, and then we go into stage, uh, sort of mid-stage one, late stage one, uh, where they're, they're not only just representing it but they're gathering it, they're organising, displaying and we've got things like lists, tables and picture graphs and, um, and we're getting some interpretation there. We go to stage two and um, there we start to see that we've got um, uh, selecting appropriate methods. So rather than just gathering it um, without thinking, perhaps, or, or gathering it just, just um, because we can, uh, we're actually starting to select methods of gathering. Um, and that's, that's really interesting to see that come in in stage two. And then we're getting into constructing, comparing, and that's uh, quite powerful to see that come into stage two because comparing is, of course, something that's very important with data. Um, interpreting and evaluating data displays, uh, including tables, pictures, um, graphs, column graphs. And then stage three, which is where you guys, um, you know, really come into your own and uh, where hopefully we in stage four pick up on your good work. Um, look at what kids are doing there. Um, collecting, they're constructing, interpreting, evaluating. You can see there's a bit of blooms there, can't you, with the evaluation. Um, and then we're getting into some pretty tricky things like dot plots, line graphs, and two-way tables. Um, I, you know, and I, I know as an English teacher, that sort of stuff's going to challenge me, even with my spreadsheet skills. So, um, uh, you know, certainly it's a, it's a mandate for us to learn a little bit more about spreadsheets if we don't. Um, and uh, you'll find it's really easy to get started with spreadsheets if you're not brilliant at them. Um, but it is good to learn how to do these things, particularly for your stage three kids and being aware that that's an important part of their outcome. I'll just quickly go and show you guys stages four to five, okay, because I want to just mention this. It's always important for primary teachers to be aware of where kids need to be uh, by the time that they um, walk out of your school right? Um, when we get into stage four, you'll see we're getting very similar stage three things, okay, uh, with collecting, representing, interpreting, um, and then we're getting things like a pr just appropriate statistical displays, and we're getting um, also this uh, other little strand that's coming in here, and um, where we look at single data analysis, um, 
looking at location and range. So there's a bit of um, uh, a few new concepts there, statistical displays, um, and they're not really specifying what displays here um, at this stage um, four and then into stage five one level. When they get into sta uh, five two and five three, which are the the, the the higher strands there, um, you'll see that there's um, uh, things like quartiles. Uh, I'll just zoom in so we can see. Oh, okay. So quartiles, box plots, sets of data, um, relationships between statistical variables, um, and you can see it gets quite complicated. Now, um, you know, it, it is really important to remember, guys, that uh, even in your stage three class, for example, you will have kids that are or could be approaching stage five in terms of their ability. You can get some very bright kids. Um, equally, in your stage three class, uh, you may have kids that will really struggle to do um, to do these sorts of things, and uh, it's really important to think about the adjustments that you're going to make as you um, as you, you you know you teach those those uh, those outcomes. So. Um, uh, yeah, uh, th this is really what we're thinking about here, guys. And um, what I wanted to, to do, and we're going to pick up on this a little bit more in the um, in the workshops. But I wanted to, to I'm going to leave you with um, the third area that we're going to look at, which is, um, as I said, you need to be signed into the program builder, because um, we're now going to have a look at a, a sample unit. So remember, sign in with your Scoodle account, and um, when you sign into the program builder, as as I I think I mentioned at the start, it is a tool that lets you create programs um, using a web interface and it's not really nifty and you can uh, muck around with it and it's a great way of creating um, uh, some sample uh, units or programs. Um, I would suggest you guys have a go at doing this, particularly as you get into your fourth year um, and you're getting close to interview time. This sort of stuff is really good. If you can actually have a go at designing uh, a unit of work um, where you can sort of take that into your your interviews and you can demonstrate to um, future employers that you're capable of designing whole units of work um, that might happen over a four-week period, for example, um, that's the sort of stuff that really gives you the X factor. So I would really urge you to um, to play around with the program builder. We are, we are for, however, going to just look at um, the samples. Okay, so um, samples are up here in the right hand corner and we're going to have a, I'm, I've been searching for a data sample to show you guys uh, and unfortunately or, or fortunately depending on how you look at, uh, if you go to the sample units here which we're going to look at you'll see there's, um, there's ones that are organized by stage and subject uh, and um, the the one that uh, I, I was I was hoping this was going to be stage three. Unfortunately, it's only stage four. It's, it's stage four, so we can't um, uh, see something that's immediately uh, applicable to the primary context. But this uh, this this unit of work here is really quite amazing. It's um, it's very nicely done. It's um, called data interpretation and evaluation with adjustments. So remember, I just mentioned a few minutes ago that those outcomes, uh, the outcome content that we looked at, is quite challenging. Um, and while you will have very bright kids that are capable of doing some of those statistical procedures, you're going to need to make adjustments for the kids that struggle. Um, so this has got some lovely adjustments in the unit to demonstrate how that's done. Uh, and this is this is stage four uh, year seven. Oh, it's stage four year eight. Okay, um, so it, it's certainly uh, a little bit of above where your kids will be if you were thinking say stage two or three uh, but it's it's not it's it's not a bad unit to, for us to look at because it's um good for you guys to think about okay well this is a good reference point uh, year seven year eight this is where the kids would be um, so how could I take something like this and adapt it um, down to um, a stage three uh, class and um, you can you can have a think about that, right? Um, by the way, if you want to get this as a Word document, it's really easy to do. You can copy this to My Units. You click that button, and then when you, you've got it in My Units, uh, what you do is you export that as a Word document, and then you can um, you can actually put that into Google Docs. I'll show you how to do that in the tutorial. Um, but this is this is a unit of work. I think this one is a. 10 week, uh, it's a quite a long one actually this one, and it's a 10 week um, inquiry unit on um, data, right? And um, they've started with a, 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 an inquiry focus, 
um, with this question um, here. Is the number of songs that students from a particular year cohort have on their portable music player representative of other year cohorts at our school and the population of the whole school? And so they've, um, they've talked a little bit about uh, um, that as, a, as an inquiry thing. Um, they, they've got some connections to, to um, uh, articles on music downloads and kids with different you know, tracks on their uh, MP3 players and um, they're, they're wondering, you know, as an inquiry question, um, how could we work with data, uh, in this case real world data, because as you go through uh, and, um, and you see um, the, what, what's happening in this unit is that um, they're, they're actually going out and surveying kids, um, finding out how many um, uh, tracks they've got on their MP3 players and actually then doing some real world data analysis. Um, you'll see they've, they've got a suggested electronic application which is SurveyMonkey. Um, I'm going to show you in the tute uh, that we can use Google Forms for the same same purpose um, as a way of um, online surveying. It's really simple to do and um, of course they've got, they mentioned throughout this that we've got, uh, um, we're going to use spreadsheets quite a bit to do some of the, the calculations. So um, you'll see spreadsheets mentioned quite a lot um, and you'll see they've actually got um, instructions here. Uh, for example, how to create a dot plot in Microsoft Excel and they've got a, a little how-to thing. Um, we're, gonna, we're going to, to be looking at this in the tute, but we're, we're going to uh, look at it from the point of view of um, uh, not Excel, but we're going to look at Google Spreadsheets uh, to see how um, some of these things can actually be done um, in, in um, in Google Spreadsheets collaboratively. So we're actually getting a team of kids to work on um, some real world data challenges and uh, to, um, to think about what they can do with that data. Um, very briefly, I'll just mention uh, a couple of things that you can actually have a little look at um, between now and the um, the tute, which we are going to have a look at in the tute. Uh, in this second section of the stage four unit, they mention um, data that's available online, and this is this is a really great little section to look at um, because there are basically two types of places that you can go. You can go to um, uh, data collections on websites like the ABS um, Census school is a really really good one okay because that'll give you um, uh, some data from recent census uh, um, takings uh, where they've done you know since uh, a census and they've um, asked all sorts of questions and it lets you download that so um, we'll explore that a little bit more in the tute but uh, I'll show you how you can get data that way um, and the ABS also does a similar thing they have little education sections where they're actually um, you can download data um, in the form of an Excel spreadsheet and then from there it's very very easy to get it into Google Spreadsheets. Um, I didn't mention that before guys but I'll, I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll come to that in a sec. The other thing that they've got here is um, the Scoodle resources and these are great. Um, the first one's broken I noticed that link uh, is broken so I had a look for that the other day and it didn't seem to work. But the other ones are really good. Okay so for example this, this little data set from the first fleet um, I'll just I'll open that and I'll just go I'll open that as a new tab um, and you'll see it takes me to Scoodle and this is another reason why you need to have your Scoodle uh, login because it gives you um, a data set from the first fleet. It's pretty damn cool guys I've got to say um, and look at this it's actually for two learning areas um, for history obviously understandably because you're getting historical data here but equally uh, valuable for mathematics so isn't that great when we were talking about the K-10 to syllabus how um, we wanted to see those connections between subject areas uh, from maths to history in this case um, and you can see how looking at a data set from the first fleet is a really great example example of, um, of how we can do that and you just, oh, it's really easy guys you just click view and it will just um, spit it out as uh, if I'm doing it right here we go it spits it out as an Excel file okay and um, just downloads in this case to my desktop and then to get that into Google Drive right it's it's really really easy I'll show you um, so remember Google Drive's all over here I've got my documents and if you've got a document on your desktop what you can do is actually drag and drop it to Google Drive. So there's the first fleet data. You can see I'm just moving it here. And if I go to my Google Drive uh, sign-in page, um, all I do is just drag 
and drop and you'll see this little icon that um, the little uh, badge that comes up incoming and you just drop it into Google Drive it drops it in there and it also converts it to a Google spreadsheet so it converts it from an Excel file into a uh, a Google file so um, I'll open this up and you can see it because this is where we're going to pick up in our chutes and I'd love it if you guys have, have done all of this um, uh, you tried it for yourself so that you're ready to come with y your own ideas um, but what it does it, it'll it, you'll see it just goes through the, um, the stages and it'll say uploaded and converted okay and then it sits in there you can right click it and rename it if you if you'd like um, but it's just the, the name of the Excel file and um, if I go to oh where's it gone Where's it gone? I'll just go back to last modified. There we go. First fleet data. Um, up it comes, right? And now I'm looking at uh, some really interesting data here that's um, real, uh, real world. It's historical in this case. And um, I've got a set of data that, that uh, not only can I look at, because at the moment this, um, this document, this spreadsheet that I've just created or just um, uploaded, um, is, is private. It's only to me. So that same thing of if I go up to the share icon, I can see that only I can access this. But wouldn't this be amazing to share this data across a group of um, three or four kids and to actually uh, collaborate on this to see what um, interpretations that we could make of the data uh, to see whether we could uh, as a group um, perhaps analyze the data in, in different areas uh, and then to share our, our findings with each each group member um, I, I'm, I'm just thinking at this stage I could think of um, uh, all sorts of really interesting uh, very higher order group tasks that I could um, I could create um, just on this this data set alone you know so um, you know same sort of thing as I showed you before I can hit the share button and then I could uh, share this one with with Kate uh, I showed you that before uh, equally I could share it with you guys um, you just need their email address and um, and you're good to go and you can share it and you can add a little message um, so this is this is really powerful stuff um, we will in the in the tute look at how you can actually make charts so with Excel um, same sort of thing okay like um, with you when you insert a chart you get a few options and um, it is actually really easy to uh, visualize um, the different charts you can see there's um, uh, a little menu here that comes up with line charts the the, the dot um, dot plots that sort of thing um, and uh, we can actually map this now to our um, outcome areas where they talked about the different ty types of charts that um, kids need to be able to um, uh, produce and interpret so so guys, I'm going to leave this there because as a, as a lecturette, I really just wanted to give you a bit of an, an opening um, uh, take on all this stuff. As you can see, the possibilities are um, limitless. Uh, I'm, I'm delighted that we've got such a great uh, syllabus to work with and one that really supports um, this kind of technology. And I'm also delighted that this technology is it's there it's free you know all you need is a web browser to use it so extraordinary technology that's um uh that's got so many um possibilities and an extraordinary syllabus um uh, you know it's such an exciting time to be a maths teacher guys and i, I really can't wait to uh, meet all of you and um to work with you in the tutes so thank you very much for your time and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you and i'll see you guys uh very soon see ya